Hurricane Fiona, now a major hurricane with 115 mile an hour winds, a category three, and now expected to hit Bermuda in three days. A big disturbance headed for the southern Woodward Islands has now a 50% chance of tropical formation in the next five days. Welcome back everyone, it is Weather United. Before I do get started with the video, I do ask really nicely that you do consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. Taking a detailed look here at our mesosector satellite imagery on major Hurricane Fiona, which now has winds up to 115 miles an hour. This is a category three hurricane on the Sanford Simpton scale, and it is now over the Turks and Caicos Islands, and it looks like the eye is trying to pop out just a little bit but otherwise it is a very intense hurricane with a lot of banding futures and yeah it's very big it's definitely strong with shear that is out of the southwest here at about 10 to 15 knots still restricting that outflow to the southwestern side of Fiona as we speak. A new Air Force recon mission has flown through the center. This is their second pass that they did. The first pass, they have found air pressure at 962 millibars, and the second pass, it's probably about the same air pressure reading, maybe a little bit lower, but look at these hurricane force winds really expanding pretty dramatically with no signs of 83 knot, maybe a couple of barbs here of 83 knot winds at the flight level standpoint, but it it does not look quite as strong as what it was overnight last night. And that's because, again, we could be seeing an Iowa replacement cycle. And we're also starting to see some of the shear increasing on Fiona, helping to weaken it. Taking a look at the National Hurricane Center really quickly here, since we have another disturbance we have to watch closely towards the second half of this video. We're at 115 mile an hour winds as of the eight o'clock advisory. It might even drop down to 110 in the, the 11 o'clock in the morning advisory because of what I'm seeing on the recon data. So it may not be a major hurricane anymore, but nevertheless, it is still a very powerful hurricane to say the least. Major hurricane intensity is anticipated with a Category 4 hurricane that is still forecasted by the National Hurricane Center. And we can even see that here on their public advisory to prove my point that we are seeing winds that are expected to reach 140 miles an hour in 36 hours. That will continue through the next 60 hour period. But again, that will all depend on what Fiona is doing right now because it does not look like it's intensifying much anymore like it was. All right, so tropical storm force winds, actually going back to the map here, uh, it will reach Bermuda in about three days as a major hurricane, and that gets very, very close, extremely close to Bermuda. And again, we could be looking at de complete devastation there, catastrophic impacts maybe in Bermuda itself. So yeah, if you're on Bermuda, if you're watching this for, from Bermuda, you need to take this pretty dang seriously and you need to make sure you are prepared. Right now, there is a 90 to 100% chance of tropical storm force winds with a 20 to 30% chance of hurricane force winds on Bermuda uh, over the next three days, okay? So the chances are slowly increasing with already a 10 to 20% chance of um, hurricane force winds on the Newfoundland and the Labradors in the Canadian Prairie. So yeah, that's something that we got to kind of monitor. Okay, so now what we have to monitor is where is Fiona going to go over the next, say, 24 to 36 hours and in the next 48, in fact. So going, uh, looking at our GFS model, our global forecasting system, we're at 969 millibars of air pressure, right? That's what the plane is kind of, well, it's much lower than what the GFS is showing, in fact, way lower. Um, so we can kind of forget about the GFS a little bit. And it drops down to 944 millibars in 66 hours. But again, it is much more stronger, um, than, and we'll have another model to prove that here in a second. But then it gets very close to Bermuda as a major hurricane with 945 millibar central pressure on that. So when we take a look here at um, our, our H-Wharf model, we can see, if we take a look at our winds, 
Um, this is supposed to intensify. It doesn't look quite as intense as what the H Wharf is currently showing, which is quite surprising. It may be a little more intense. We'll have to figure that out when the NHC updates. But right now, it doesn't look to be um, intensifying anymore, really. And I don't think it's going to intensify much more after today with winds that are going to max out at around 110 to 100 and. Uh, 30 miles an hour potentially might intensify actually a little bit more in the next 51 hours with winds that could peak at 140 to near 150 miles an hour. Look at how close it gets to Bermuda right there. There's your island um, over the next three or so days. Gets um, awfully close. And so that's what we got to really watch closely for. All right, so another area that we're watching closely that could become our next disturbance will be Invest 98L, now dubbed from the National Hurricane Center that is now going to be impacting the Southern Windward Islands as more than likely, hopefully, like this, nothing any stronger, but it looks like it might strengthen along the way and get better organized right now. We're seeing a lot of clumpiness to thunderstorms, a lot of kind of percolating convection, but it is starting to form what we call a surface low slowly within this wave envelope. And it will be interesting to see how this all evolves as it moves in off towards the west northwesterly direction at about 10 to 20 miles an hour. From the NHC standpoint, we can clearly see with what it's showing, uh, anywhere between a 40 to now 50% chance of tropical formation. Well, to be specific, it has a 10% chance in the next two days and a 50% chance in the next five days of tropical formation. There is your Fiona that we just talked about with the impacts. And then we have also another disturbance lurking in the middle of the Atlantic that has a, a 60 to 7 or a 70 to 80 percent chance of tropical formation. So we could have another named storm here before September or a couple more before we get into October. So let's take a look here at our GFS model again because we got to watch our second disturbance that is right here. This is in about 12 hours. Yes. Oh, no, wait. 12 hours, no, 36 hours, my bad. We can see 1,006 millibars, so assuming that the deep convection does continue, we may have a surface low on the GFS um, pretty much as early as about um, 36 or so hours. And then in 60 hours by Thursday morning, this could have pressures down to 998 millibars. Now, we're probably not going to assume that just because, again, what the probabilities are. The GFS seems to be convective biased all the time. It seems to overdo things. We all know that. So, again, we just don't know exactly how this is going to all evolve in that 60-hour time frame. But nevertheless, it has my attention significantly for tropical development. And it looks like it's going to continue to do that in the next five days. Surprisingly enough, it actually weakens a little bit due to some shear that it's going to encounter a little bit of dry air as well. But then after that, when it clears a shear, it could intensify at a very quick rate here at 973 millibars by early next week. Now again, I'm not going to go, I just realized I went a little too far in the forecast. I really do not like going further than say... Um, day five just because the models are likely going to change quite a bit and we just don't know exactly if this is going to even develop or not we just don't know because again right now it's just a blob of deep convection and that's really all there is to it so now looking at the european model let's kind of play this through the european model reason why i'm not confident that it's going to be um developing rapidly is because the european model doesn't show hardly anything on this so this is 45 hours out this is two days going all the way out to thursday friday um still nothing at all on this um, nothing in the caribbean over the next five days on the european model so this could be a likelihood scenario we'll have to just see and wait from other model guidance if this is able to develop but five days out we're really not seeing anything it's one of those things again is the gfs going crazy with these systems again like it did with our last system i think it was earl remember how 
Uh, we th- uh, we saw Earl was coming, but then there was, I think it was that. It was like in early-ish September when the GFS model wanted to explode something out here in the middle of the Caribbean. Never happened. So we'll see. Could the GFS be lying towards us again? We just don't know. But all we know is it's been consistent for several runs already that a hurricane could, or not a hurricane, that a disturbance could form in the Caribbean. It might. It's not it will. It just might. And that's why the NHC has a 50% chance of tropical formation in the next five days. If you found this weather information very helpful, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates. But anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.